In this simulation video, we'll be taking a quick look at some basic footing options that can be utilized with evolution steel framing posts. There will be two main options shown in this video, however, it's best to verify and follow your local building codes or check with an engineer as footing requirements can vary per region and per build. Before we get started, here's a list of the recommended tools and safety equipment you'll want to have on hand when working with our Evolution Steel Framing product. Know that all posts must be temporarily braced until fully stabilized and permanently connected with framing or other structural members. For deck frames, this means that all beams, joists, hangers, and any blocking that shores up the structure should be in place before the bracing can be removed. In short, the deck frame should be fully assembled and secured first before bracing is removed from the assembly. The first option we'll look at is the buried post option. Here we'll give the basic guidance to use with the Evolution product. However, if you need additional information on how to set up strings, align and support posts or bolts, we recommend checking online as there are an abundance of videos that show various footing setups. With either option, the first thing to address is digging, and if there will be digging, it's important to remember to contact any local utility or authority. For instance, in the US call 811, the call before you dig number in advance. Other regions may require going to websites, such as click before you dig. This is so local utilities can come out and mark any buried water, gas, or power lines to be taken into consideration before any digging starts. Regardless of the region, this is something that must be done for personal protection and safety. The next thing is to ensure that the hole will be dug in accordance with local or building code requirements. Items such as depth, width, and amount of drainage can come into play here and even other special requirements such as bell-shaped or square-bottom buried concrete piers. In this example, the hole will be 40 inches deep, which will account for 3 feet of the post and a few inches of drainage. The extra inch is for tolerance at the top of the hole. The other item to consider is the width. As a general rule, doubling the size of the post is common. This deck will use a 5 and a half inch post. So, to be safe, the diameter of the hole will be 12 inches. With proper size holes dug for all the posts on the perimeter of the deck, add the drainage rock material to the hole, then the post. Ensure the post is at the proper height and that it's level. Secure the post with any bracing material as needed. Lastly, add the prepared concrete. Note that the concrete should come to within one inch of the top of the hole. The post should be secured in the center and checked for plumb and level. Adjust the post and any bracing as needed. Repeat this process with the remaining posts while also ensuring the tops of the posts are level and the front of the posts are perfectly in line. Then allow the buried post and concrete at least 24 hours to cure before beginning to add brackets. The other option is to dig and set concrete piers. These are made using a prefabbed form that can either be purchased or built. The same rules for digging our hole will typically apply here, the differences being that the hole will be the diameter of the form and it should not require crushed stone or gravel added for drainage. Once you have the form set, this is a great time to check and ensure its level across the top. This should not be skipped as it can help ensure the post mounting surface will be level. Next, add the concrete mix to the hole and form. If using a wet set J bolt or concrete anchor, set them in place now. J bolts and wet set concrete anchors will need additional bracing to hold them up and in place while the concrete is drying. Note, that additional string lines may also be needed in order to ensure the bolts are in line and centered. Allow adequate time for the pier to dry, then remove the form. Verify the mounting surface around the bolt is level and make any adjustments to the top of the pillar as needed. This setup is now ready to receive an evolution pier to post or foundation mount. Let's also take a quick look at this process using a drive-in anchor bolt, starting from the point where the concrete has dried and the form has been removed. Take a hammer drill and with an adequately sized bit, drill a hole in the center of the pillar. Then insert or drive the anchor bolt into the pillar. Note that the size of this bolt can vary or be larger based on code requirements. In this example, a 3 8 inch drill bit and bolt were used. However, it's best to check what local building code may require for both the size and length of the bolt. Once the bolt has been inserted and fixed in position, this pillar is ready to receive an evolution pier to post connection. Repeat the process for all piers, ensuring that the bolts will be in a straight line and ready to proceed to the post mounting step. For more information on our steel deck framing products, including where to buy, 
stop by our website at fortressbp.com forward slash framing. And don't forget to check out our other Evolution Steel Framing videos as we continue to help our customers steal the show.